Right, so a few weeks ago I got access to some Honma products and uh, I tested how on course these TW747 irons and I've got to say, I had a bit of a shock, they performed incredibly well. And now, we're going to have a look at the drivers. I'm going to go to a rack, I'm going to get a driver out of the rack, any old shaft on to a degree, let's say, and I'm going to hit another club. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Because I want to see just what's happening today. Is it something to do with the way I'm swinging? I'll be back in one second. Right, so let's get started. As ever, I'll hit both drivers. Um, in terms of spec, in what differs, not a huge amount. 455cc uh, head is obviously slightly smaller, and it's a different profile in shape. I suppose you'd call a 455, uh, they made that a little bit awkward for me, uh, a little bit more traditional in its shape, but from the top line, um, a bit more elongated on the 460 head, maybe a little bit shallower, but like I said, this 455 is more your traditional looks. Weighting in um, slightly different positions, again, in terms of what we're looking for, lower spinning version of 455, so the clear aimed at two different types of player. And on paper, at least, this is the driver that is aimed at me, that being the 460. 10.5, 9.5 degrees aloft. I've hit this off camera, and I'm finding that, oddly enough, I'm performing better with the regular shaft. The shafts are these Vizard shafts, they're handcrafted shafts made um, by Honma themselves. And they make a big deal out of that, about the quality of how good these shafts are. It's a very light shaft, it's 50 gram, and I'm gonna use the regular in both of these. I've got regular and stiff, but I'm gonna use regular, switch it out and play it in between. The setup is a very complicated um, method of altering uh, the loft and lie angle of these clubs. And what I would suggest, if anyone's considering them, this is a custom fit job. You have got to go and get this uh, fitted with a specialist and make sure once it's set up, you leave well alone. Because like I said, it is a very, very uh, strange system they've put together. Anyway, forgetting all that, let's talk about looks, throw some pictures up on screen for you now. Like with the irons, um, they're not drawing me on the shelf. The, uh, I think what they, what they look is they look like a quality product. They look like it's well built, well made. Um, and yeah, I would certainly say it ticks a box in terms of how good it looks in terms of the quality. But it's a bit complicated in terms of the design on the shelf. It's not overly appealing to me. It's not overly modern. It has got um, a look of what we expect from the your, uh, Far East markets to be perfectly honest with you. So I think that'd be interesting to know, again, your comments down below. What do you think in terms of how they've made these clubs look? I think for me, the, um, the forged irons is by far the standout product in the range so far. Anyway, I think that's enough talking. We're not going to talk because every claim in terms of the tech spec is exactly what we'd expect. Faster ball speeds across the face. Uh, they've got a four fanged um, system going on, I think, inside of that head. I think the way I'd explain it, it's very much like jailbreak technology in terms of a little bit of structure that supports the face and ensures that we've got fast ball speeds across that whole area. So that's something that will no doubt help the average golfer. So which one have we got the regular shaft in? We've got it in the 455 head. So I think straight away I'll hit a couple of balls on camera and I'll give you some immediate feedback. So it's quite nice, like I said, again, I know it's no big deal, but the shaft again has got this orange and black, or fairly, um, it's just a bit too complicated for me. My eye has been drawn from the club head to the shaft, and that's something I don't really want to be doing. So that's something straight away that um, I would mark as a potential negative. Anyway, let's see how it performs. That's not a bad start. Like I said, hit quite a few balls off camera. 
comfortable with the uh, the sort of setup I've got it. I've got it set up in a very neutral position, to be honest with you. Um, decent enough start. The, the one thing I will tell you straight away, and like I said, I'm trying to give you an immediate reaction, but I have it these off camera, is that the, it's a very lightweight shaft. Um, and I've hit lightweight shafts and they suit me, but the thing that I'm not too keen on is the relationship between the head and the shaft in this particular setup. And I literally can't feel where this head is. I hit two decent balls there, to be fair. I would say they've pretty much come out the middle. And the one thing, again, I, uh, immediate feedback, I try and always be as honest as I possibly can. I can tell you by where them balls are going. Um, we ain't breaking any records here, and there's nothing spectacular going on off camera either. So what it doesn't do, um, I'm thinking I walk into a fit centre and you give me this as an option. Um, having tried the amount of clubs that I have, this is doing not a great deal at the moment to spark my interest. Let's hit one more. Again, three decent strikes. Looking at where they land out there in the drive range, I'll say exactly the same thing. Nothing major going on right now. I switch this shaft out, I'll get it to the 460 head um, and see how I perform with that and then we'll have a look at some numbers, eh? So no major differences, uh, like I said, um, not massively different visually. This is that more elongated shape that we've seen, a, a, a slightly shallower profile. Um, there's a, one positive again is the difference in colour between face and uh, crown. I think it really frames the ball quite well. But again, a little bit of distraction in terms of the colour of the shaft. But again, that might be a real sort of personal thing and I might be uh, really finding something that most people wouldn't have an issue with. I'm swinging a club all right today anyway. Um, interesting thing is, I mean, people talk about technology and uh, what it does or doesn't do, whether you believe it or not. Um, one thing that certainly does happen with golf clubs is the placement of the CG. And straight away, just one shot different in the ball flight is uh, quite a bit different there from, uh, from the, the 455. And looks a bit, a bit high and a bit spinny maybe as well. Uh, quite a difference in terms of ball flight. Again, I didn't notice it as much, noticed it off camera. Um, this thing again about the shaft head combination and really struggling to feel where it is. So for me as a personal fit, and I know there are options, but they're not a huge amount of options. Um, I would probably be looking at a different shaft, but the one negative that I can't get away from is the feel and sound. And it's a real, I don't know whether you pick it up off camera there, um, but there's a real shotgun sound going off. It's very, very harsh. And although I always say the acoustics are different inside here than we will be out on the course, uh, this is one of the loudest um, attention-seeking drivers I've played or tested. There you go, I don't know if you can hear it, but that is absolutely, it's loud. And it's a decent ball. Um, so more than happy in terms of what I've stuck together in terms of performance. The one noticeable thing with, uh, between two drivers, and I'll have a look in the numbers, is the dispersion was very, very good. Uh, I don't think they've travelled in terms of uh, a carry distance, but in terms of dispersion, they seemed not too bad. Right, I'll go on, I'll hit some more golf balls, uh, with both clubs obviously, and uh, we'll get some proper data. We'll narrow it down, have a look. Am I talking absolute garbage? Is this performing better than I think it does? And uh, what's the overriding opinion uh, of these Hummer drivers from an average golfer? Right, okay, so that's a reasonable amount of data collected on both clubs, like I said, same shaft. Um, let's get straight into numbers and I'll put them in front of you now. Like I said, I swung the club okay today, reasonably happy with performance. Uh, let's get straight into the 455cc uh, head, which is where we started. So, 142 ball speed, um, swinging on average 98 mile an hour, which is exactly where I'd expect to be. 2682 spin on average, which again is not particularly low spinning for a low spinning driver. The carry distance, I mean, I've got to say, incredibly disappointed. 226 carry, uh, launching fairly low at 12.9 um, degrees. 
As you can tell from the tone of my voice, not overly impressed with that. So let's get straight in, I think, to the 460 and see what happened there. So once again, 97 uh, in terms of club speed, 143.8, so slightly faster ball speeds. Um, 2943 spin, so not a massive drop off in terms of spin performance uh, between that and the 455. And again, overall, just a little bit more carry at 228. Um, I will throw up for both dispersion because I think one thing it performed very well indeed was um, was how straight, let's say, um, or how tightly packed the shots were. But at this stage, that is about the, seriously, one of the only positives I can take. And I'm never here to kind of like really not product. Uh, that's not my style for anybody who watches the videos. Uh, but I've got to admit, I'm struggling here to give sort of a great deal of positivity towards this club, um, or either of them, in terms of performance. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a rack, I'm going to get a driver out of the rack, any old shaft on, to a degree, let's say, and I'm going to hit another club. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Because I want to see just what's happening today. Is it something to do with the way I'm swinging? I'll be back in one second. these numbers up because I know before we start so what, what I ended up with just out of interest uh, was a Cobra F9 driver it had uh, hazardous six stiff shafting um, and again probably wouldn't be my choice uh, of shaft but anyway it was there I used it and I can assure you this is no setup um, all of a sudden let's get back to the beginning so let's see I'm sorry to do this sort of 97.8 club head speed so no difference there 148 ball speed still spinning very high at 2988 so for me again that would be the wrong shaft situation we want to drop that spin down a bit but an average carry of 244.5 yards it's 15 17 it's between 17 and 12. look and there's what did i in the end five shots there all over 240 carry am i recording this um, like I said, if this, this video wasn't a head-to-head -head, and maybe this is slightly wrong uh, for, for me to have done what I've just done. Um, yeah, maybe it is, I don't know. But the reality is that uh, I knew that if I went and for my own peace of mind, I needed to see in terms of performance what was going on. Um, and the Cobra F9 is a perfectly good driver, but I honestly feel if I'd have got Epic Flash, if I'd have got M5, uh, I genuinely believe, I'm um, looking at the Mizuno drivers there, but I can't remember the name of it, that they would have outperformed that. Honestly, I, I'm so uh, disappointed. I'm not really, um, I can't put any great logic to it. Um, maybe the shaft again was so wrong for me, but in terms of performance out of that club head on both types, I knew straight away that nothing fantastic was going on for me. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe that driver just isn't for me. I don't know. But I try, like I said, I almost feel uh, a slight sort of, bullying mentality picking on the Honda I'm not doing that I just read out the figures and I have a look what goes on out there and I never hide from the fact that let's not forget that driver by the way and I always shy away from price but price doesn't matter if you're happy to pay it and you're getting the performance then fine but that's a 550 quid driver against a 349 quid driver and there is a very difficult to justify the performance difference and on that basis alone it's definitely not for me. I think that was a bit of a harsh review, but I'm sorry. That's the way it is. As ever, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that everybody respects my honesty and I'm keen to keep my integrity intact. And therefore, I couldn't have said anything different on this review, I'm afraid. Right, thank you for watching. Comments down below and uh, I'll see you all very soon.